is a resource person for various national and international conferences, seminars in different parts of India. He conducted a large number of technical sessions on stress management, disaster management, effective decision making, environmental concerns, global warming, leadership and team building and team management. He has also received many awards like Deccan Geography Society Award, the Best Geography Teacher Award in 2015. He, he received the HDFC Band West Award of 2014. With this, I will welcome sir to give his presentation and uh, thank you sir for accepting our invitation. Over to you Nadav sir. Yes sir, thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, respected Honorable Registrar of Telangana University, Professor Naseem, Dr. Aruna, Dr. Sai Baskar Reddy, Professor Vidya Vardhani, Madam Lina Reddy, the coordinator of this national webinar, Dr. Abdul Halim Khan, my fellow resource persons and delegates. At the outset, I feel proud and privileged to be associated with the one day national webinar on plant and environment organized by the Department of uh, Botany, Telangana University in association with the Council for Green Revolution, Hyderabad. The topic selected for this conference is the need of the hour because our planet is undergoing serious crisis I'm sure the efforts made by the Department of Botany, Telangana University will go a long way in creating awareness on the importance of plant and importance of environment for not only the academicians, the researchers, but also to the common people. Because here we have large number of teachers and teachers are the one who create awareness in the society. So I'm sure the purpose of this conference will be surely served at the end of the day. Well, uh, today I'm going to speak on the mangroves. Uh, I have titled my presentation as the mangroves custodians of the coast. We all know that uh, since the beginning of the earth, since the antiquity of man, Oceans have served as a linkage between the human beings and the land, and they have bonded together. Nature has gifted about 123 countries of the world in the tropics and trop tropics with a coastline of about 1.6 million kilometers. So all the countries are not fortunate to have a coastline out of uh, 220 odd countries, only 123 countries are having coastline uh, which covers about 1.6 million kilometers. Uh, the coastal areas of the world are one of the dynamic and uh, vulnerable areas. Uh, they are dynamic because every day uh, the coastlines are changing and especially in the age of uh, climate change and global warming, the coastal areas of the world have achieved greater significance because we are linking the survival of uh, the humanity, the survival of this entire planet with the coastline. Uh, there are many reasons to believe this uh, as I discuss further. So I'll be able to unfold uh, uh, one thing after the another. The reason why the coastal areas, the oceans and the seas are very important because uh, they control our climate. Because Oceans are the ones they give us rains. Oceans are the ones they give us the food, clothing and shelter. So therefore, oceans are very important for not only the human beings, but also to the entire uh, plant kingdom, the animal kingdom and all the living organisms on the earth. So they have a major control on the climatic conditions of the earth. Coast are the natural buffer zones. So on one side we have hydrosphere, on the other side we have lithosphere. 
and in between is the coast. The anger, the wrath of the oceans or the seas are being um, absorbed by the coast. So therefore we consider that the coast as the natural buffer zone. If coast were not there, if there was no protection in the way you know, that we have today, uh, the entire coastal areas would have got uh, uh, more damage. So therefore, the coastal areas act as the natural buffer zone, which protects the, uh, the life on the terrestrial ecosystems. The coastal areas are also very important because they supply the nutrients to the sea. So in the oceans, we have uh, a large species of uh, plants, animals, aquatic animals, etc. They require nutrients for their survival. And majority of the nutrients into the sea are being supplied by the coast. So therefore, coastal areas are very important. The coastal areas are also known to have rich natural resources. Not only there are resources along the coast, we find the innumerable resources even in the oceans. So some of the resources that are not found on the land are found to be, are, are available or they are found concentrated in the ocean. So therefore, they act as a natural reservoir of natural resources. Uh, we all know that uh, coastal areas are the big attraction for tourism. A place like Goa or a place like Kerala or any other coastal states attract tourism. This is not the only case in India. You go anywhere in the world, the beaches, the coastal areas attract millions and millions of uh, the tourists and the tourists come here to take the pleasure and the leisure of the coastal area. So from the economics point of view, uh, the coastal areas are very important because tourism gives us jobs, it gives us uh, economy, it I mean, it gives us uh, employment, uh, it gives us foreign exchange and uh, uh, the overall economic development in the areas where tourism is there is primarily because of this. Uh, from land, we release a lot of uh, land refuses the waste and the entire waste goes into sea and sea has been uh, absorbing all our uh, refuses. Uh, now today, uh, this is another problem because uh, we have now islands of uh, solid waste in the oceans because for so many years, we have been sending all the waste into the ocean and at many places, now we can find the islands of uh, the land refusals. Uh, this has been happening for a very long time. Uh, trade and commerce, um, more than 50% uh, of the trade happening between uh, two countries is through uh, the sea route. And we all know that uh, the British, the Dutch, the Portuguese, they came to India uh, through the sea route uh, for, for the search of uh, trade and commerce. So this is a very well uh, known uh, incidents in the history. So hence the oceans play a very important role in promoting trade and commerce. Now think of uh, the amount of money that uh, our country is spending in uh, Northwest, North and in the Northeast because our country shares border with other countries, with China, with Pakistan, with Bangladesh and with other countries. But when you have a sea or a coastline or a coast, we did not spend much of the money on the defense of the country because the coast itself, the shoreline itself provides a natural defense to any country. That is the advantage that the coastal countries are having uh, since the historic times. When it comes to population, it is believed that 60% of the world's population lives along the coastal areas. You think of uh, any big city, all the big cities are located in the coastal areas. Uh, let it be London, the Tokyo, uh, Mumbai, Chennai, Kolkata, um, the Mexico City, uh, any city for that matter, whether 
uh, the North American city, the South American, the Australians, the Asians, the Africans, all the cities are located along the coast. And within 100 kilometers from the coast, 30% of the world's population lives. And within the coastal zone, 60% of the population lives. So therefore, the coastal areas are very important because they are the areas of huge concentration of uh, population. If anything goes wrong to the coastal areas, then 60% of the population directly gets affected. So these are the very important advantages of the coastal areas. Now, due to the such importance, uh, so what nature has done is it has provided a natural defense to the coastal areas in the form of mangroves. So mangroves are not found everywhere. They are found only in the coastal areas. Again, not in all the coastal areas, but they are limited to the tropics and the subtropics. So mangroves is a very special forest, a very special forest. The word mangrove has come from the Portuguese language, mangu. Mangu means tree. And whereas gru means stand of trees. So these are basically uh, shrubs. They are found in the shallow and sandy or muddy areas in the uh, coastal zones. The mangroves are also known as mangal. They are also known as mangal. The mangroves are salt tolerant. So normally we, we know that, uh, you know, if you take some salt and go and put it uh, or you give it to a plant by, you know, digging around, I think in no time that tree will die because our normal plants are not salt resistant. But mangroves are salt resistant. So without salt, they cannot survive. As a result, they grow in saline areas, they grow in brackish areas, they grow in uh, salty lagoon areas and also along the estuaries. Uh, the very important characteristics of uh, these uh, uh, mangroves is that they can, they can live in low oxygen area and many a times these plants are waterlogged. They are waterlogged. The roots of these plants are not to be seen all the time. They are waterlogged, they are in a muddy condition and uh, the amount of oxygen available to them is very, very less. And as a result of which, the mangroves have got aerial roots. So there are two roots. One, the root which is normal, like any other tree, on which the plant sustains its stability. And because all the time, all the time, the plant is submerged into the water, so it requires oxygen to survive. Hence, it has got aerial roots like this, aerial roots. And these aerial roots, they come above the water and they take the required amount of oxygen. So this is a very speciality. In the sense, the mangroves have uh, two roots. One root, which is a normal root, which has got its own base into the soil. And the second one, uh, the roots that grow towards uh, towards uh, the, 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 the sky uh, because they are believed to come above the water because many a times they are submerged into the water, come above and take the required amount of uh, oxygen. So that is why they have got two roots, one to stabilize and second one to take the oxygen from the atmosphere. Now, as I said that uh, the mangroves survive in the saline water or saline conditions, they have a special capacity to, to remove excess salt. There are two, they, they have got two characteristics. One, from salty water, they can derive fresh water. So they can extract fresh water and they also have the ability to remove the excess salt due to the salt gland. So you can see on this particular plant, a lot of uh, salt crystals are being concentrated on the leaves. So this is the excess salt that has been removed by the plant. And it also has the capacity, as I said, uh, to extract fresh water from the saline water and 
survive. There are uh, three main genera of uh, uh, the mangroves uh, which grow in the intertidal zone. Now, intertidal zone is nothing but it is a zone between low tide and high tide. So, in the low tide, in the lower side of the low tide, you find one genus of the uh, of the mangroves which is called as uh, red mangroves. Then you have black mangroves. Then we have white mangroves, and then at the uh, little higher altitude uh, or in the uplands, you find uh, button wood. So this is how there are four, basically three genera, but uh, this is the fourth one, which is addition to this found in the intertidal uh, zone that is between the low tide and high tide. Now, why they are called red mangroves? which botanically are called rhizophora. They are red mangroves because the roots of the mangroves are red in color. The bark, not exactly the roots, but basically the bark of the mangroves is red in color. So therefore they are called red mangroves. And these red mangroves are found in the uh, low tide areas. Then we have the black mangroves. Now again, the black mangroves are black because their stem is blackish in color, may not be 100% black, but it is grayish black in color. So therefore they are called black mangroves. Now these black mangroves are found little higher, or you could say in the mean low tide region, in the mean low tide region, but in the low tide region, you find the red ones in the mean low tide, you find the black mangroves. Then you have the white mangroves. So look at uh, uh, the roots or, uh, yeah, look at the roots of uh, this, this mangrove. So you can find here that they are white in color. So now these mangroves are found in the high tide mean zone. So meaning the salinity required for these plants is less, whereas the salinity required for red mangrove is very high because it's in the low uh, i mean in the low tide region and this is in the high tide region the fourth one is called the button woods uh, these plants survive uh, with a very very less uh, salinity the reason why they are called as button woods because the flower heads of this plant looks like buttons so here you can find some flowers and these flowers look like a button so therefore they are called button woods and they survive on the least amount of uh, saline water in the uplands so these are uh, three very important uh, genera of the mangroves now why mangroves are important the mangroves are important because they protect coastline from erosion every day the waves come and hit the coastal areas. And every time waves come and hit the coastal areas, the coastal area tend to get eroded. But it is very fortunate for the coastal areas to have the mangroves. And these mangroves have the capacity to take the pressure of the waves and protect the coastal areas from uh, large scale erosion. So today, uh, in the tropics and the subtropic areas, the coastlines are protected uh, from erosion. Erosion definitely happening, but large scale erosion is being controlled because of the presence of uh, mangroves. So mangroves protect coastal areas from uh, large scale erosion. The mangroves provide the first line of defense to the coastal community. So we have large number of fishing communities we have uh, many other people living there. Uh, the coastal areas, the, the shoreline or the coastline is the home of all these communities. And these communities are living here for centuries. The mangroves provide as a first line of defense to these communities. So before a major disaster occurs, the local communities get an opportunity to shift to the safer areas. If mangroves were not there, uh, the local communities, the coastal communities, we call them as, would have definitely suffered the 
major damages. So therefore, mangroves are very important. Uh, first line defense for the coastal uh, communities. Uh, the mangroves are just not the plants. Uh, they are the breeding grounds for fish, shrimps, crabs, corals, and other shellfish. So the life along the coast cannot be imagined without fish. In an average, in the mangrove areas, 3,000 different species of fish can be uh, found. A uh, good amount of shrimps can be seen. Many species of crabs are found. The corals, very, very rare corals can be seen. And also you have shellfish, meaning uh, the mangrove ecosystem zones, not only uh, they are known for plants, they are also known for different uh, living organism, which includes uh, economically very important uh, ship, crabs, and the shrimps in the coastal areas. The nature of coastline is determined by the mangroves. Look at the beautiful mangroves in this photograph. Now, these mangro mangroves will determine what is going to be the nature of the coast. Because these mangroves are protecting the coast. So they will dis determine the nature of the coastline. So here you can find that uh, the coast is not straight. Wherever the vegetation has grown, so it has protected. And wherever there is no vegetation, the water is being um, flown as backwaters or uh, uh, the inland waters. So this is how the mangroves protect and provide a shape to the coastal areas. Uh, we are living in the age of uh, climate change and global warming. So the temperature of the earth is increasing uh, day by day. We have, I think uh, in last 300 years, increased the temperature of the earth by about two degrees centigrade. So in 300 years, temperature increasing to 200 degree centigrade is unimaginable. And not only that, the carbon emission has increased to to highest in the entire history of the earth. Uh, but uh, the answer to control carbon emission lies in the mangroves, a normal terrestrial forest. Whatever carbon it stores, the mangroves can store more than 10 times per hectare carbon, they can store so much of carbon. So therefore, uh, if we start uh, making the habit of uh, regenerating mangroves, because mangroves, uh, mangroves grow automatically, we, we, we don't require to plant them, they naturally grow. So if we don't interfere into the mangrove ecosystem, so they just keep on growing and growing. And uh, these mangroves can play a very important role in controlling the the carbon emission because they can st store uh, more 10 times more than the terrestrial forest of uh, the earth so mangroves are very important in uh, in in storing the carbon per unit of uh, uh, area now let's look at uh, the distribution of mangroves in india uh, we have uh, 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 two very important places where the concentration of mangroves is very large. Uh, one is the West Bengal because of Sundarban delta deltas. So we have heard of Sundarban deltas. Similarly, it is Gujarat, which has got uh, a good amount of uh, mangroves. And after that, we have the Andaman Nicobar Islands. Andhra Pradesh is also very fortunate in having uh, moderately dense to open mangroves. About uh, uh, 404 uh, square kilometers of area is being inhabited by the mangroves in uh, uh, Andhra Pradesh. The other states where mangroves are found includes Goa, Karnataka, Kerala, Maharashtra, Orissa, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Nicobar, uh, sorry, uh, Damandiv and uh, uh, Puducherry or uh, Pondicherry. Pondicherry and uh, Andhra, uh, sorry, uh, the, the Daman and Div, uh, they hardly account for some amount of uh, mangroves, but other states uh, have got sizable, even uh, Kerala is not having much, uh, but other states have got a considerable amount of area under uh, uh, the mangroves. 
India accounts for about two percent of the uh, total mangrove forest of the world. So in the world, we we have about uh, uh, two lakh fourteen thousand square kilometers of area under forest that is the mangrove forest, out of which four thousand nine hundred twenty one. Uh, square kilometers of uh, mangrove forest is in India, so it means that uh, our mangrove cover accounts to about two uh, percent of the total uh, the mangrove cover of the earth. And whereas when it comes to India's forest cover, if you compare with the forest cover of India with the mangrove cover, the mangrove cover which is only uh, four thousand nine hundred and twenty-one comes to about point fifteen percent of the total. Uh, the forest cover of uh, our country so these are the pockets i have already told you uh, where we find the mangroves in india you have sundarban mangroves mahanadi mangroves krishna godavari mangroves andaman nicobar mangroves kaveri deltaic mangroves goa mangroves ratnagiri mangroves and the mangroves of uh, gujarat so these are the pockets where you find very rich uh, mangrove forest or uh, very rich mangrove community or mangrove ecosystem uh, globally uh, as i said earlier that uh, 240 square kilometers of area is covered by forest that is the mangroves about 49% of the mangrove is found in asia alone so asia is a very important continent where we find the mangroves and apart from this uh, you also find uh, the rich mangroves in the uh, Central uh, America, then along uh, the coast of Africa, the, along the coast of North America, and also along the coast of uh, uh, the Australia. So these are the pockets where you find uh, the mangroves globally. Uh, it will be very interesting to understand, as I have already said, that they are found only in the tropic and subtropic so you will not find them in the uh, temperate and polar regions because uh, temperature is a very important uh, condition for their growth apart from the saline condition so here water may be saline but the temperatures are very less under low temperatures mangroves cannot grow uh, today, mangroves uh, are having threats uh, because of climate change and global warming. Um, the sea level is rising, all of us know, and the mangroves are getting uh, submerged uh, to a beyond uh, their capacity. Uh, tourism has gone, so tourism is a very important activity, but uh, tourism has created more negative uh, problems in the mangrove areas than uh, anything else. A lot of uh, government projects are coming up in the coastal areas. So the coastal development also has created a problem for the mangroves. The pollution is another problem. So the entire pollution through the rivers come to the coastal areas. Uh, the artificial cultivation of shrimps, that is aquaculture, is also creating a problem of uh, monoculture.